Hey YouTube, it's Ben here with the 60 gallon tank. And um, I'm making a video that I was, uh, I was questioning whether I should make it, but uh, maybe you guys can learn from my mistake. And so I'm gonna go ahead and share it with you. Uh, I've seen videos like this before. I know uh, Lou9214, he had a uh, video one time on what he hated about the hobby. I think it was called uh, What I Really Dislike About the Cichlid Hobby. And I think the King of D, uh, DIY, the King of DIY, he put one out, a uh, video one time called They Are Dead. And uh, uh, usually I like to keep things very upbeat, but uh, there uh, was a recent event and uh, maybe you guys can learn from it. And um, so uh, let's go ahead and get right to it. So in a nutshell, what happened is I, um, I decided to turn some of the, um, the two inputs from the Sun Sun 302s that I run on my tank. I decided to slightly turn them so that they're facing more in the direction of the uh, wave maker to create a more even flow throughout the tank. Well, what that did is it turned the um, it turned the the outlets so that they were going the water was going down into the tank. And something I was doing was um, sort of was turning off the power heads so that the fish would have uh, some moments at night where they could, uh, so during when they were sleeping, so things were a little calmer in the water. But, but the outlets from the Sun Suns were breaking up the surface and uh, in the position that I had them before, so everything was fine. But a few nights ago when I turned those uh, outputs and the water flow started going directly into the tank, what happened is, and the um, power and the uh, power had turned off. I had no uh, no real breaking up of the surface. And so what this did essentially was um, cut off the oxygen supply, or not allow enough oxygen to support the number of fish that I had in the tank. So the next morning when I woke up. I discovered um, several several fish had died, and uh, so you can imagine how upsetting that was, especially when you consider that some of them were my uh, were babies that I had raised and were now becoming spectacular fish, like the Fusco, uh, the Tangerine Tiger. Uh, I believe I also lost the flame tail, a baby OB that was born in this tank, and um, and my German Red. So um, fish died, I guess, until there was enough um, enough of them gone to leave enough oxygen to support the remaining fish. Or some of these fish, I don't know, maybe had less of an oxygen requirement than some of the other ones. But obviously, without the surface tension breaking continuously, especially the way we overstock our African cichlid tanks, the oxygen levels can drop dangerously low very quickly. And all of a sudden, the fish do not have enough oxygen available to them, and they perish. And uh, that's what happened to me. And um, it was a uh, expensive and a bit of a painful lesson. And uh, so the moral of that story is uh, always make sure you have uh, you have a lot of um, a lot of surface agitation, and um, and if it's not being provided by a power head, be sure you provide it with um, the outlets of your canisters or air stones or whatever you have going on, always make sure that there is a lot of uh, surface tension, especially in overstocked cichlid tanks, which probably have, because of the number of fish, of course, have a higher O2 requirement than you'd have in, let's say, a, uh, a normally stocked community tank. So um, 
let's take a look here at some of the fish that uh, I lost. Well, as you can see, some of those were pretty, uh, pretty spectacular. But um, you know, when you when you look at the loss of fish and you uh, compare it or put it in perspective to some of the things that are going on around the world, um, you know, uh, one of my kids used to refer it, refer to those kind of problems as uh, first world problems. You know. It does hurt, but it's not uh, really in the total scheme of things. And the total scheme of things is going to be uh, of much impact. What I would prefer to focus on, actually, are the fish that made it, the fish that survived, and those include, uh, of course, my uh, Bicolor 500 and my uh, Lemon Jake crazy about those fish and uh, one of the first cichlids I ever bought, my OB. Someone called him a raspberry. All three of my uh, Los Tres Amigos, all three of my clown luches survived and um, what we've concluded is this little otter point, he made it, the little sulfur head that's hiding in the rocks. He made it, and that looks like a butterfly. It's a little butterfly cichlid that just came out of the rocks there. Of course, he made it. My electric blue, who's been uh, asserting himself and uh, trying to take control of the tank. My redfin borlei. Bucanono. The Bucanono made it which surprises me because he never stops moving. He certainly consumes a lot of oxygen. And um, my little green face hap, little insignus, he made it and I'm very glad he made it since he is one of my favorites. So, um, so in closing, I guess the, uh, my conclusion is uh, if it works, don't mess with it. Don't change it. I certainly made a, cha a change in an ecosystem that was functioning fine. And, uh, and certainly be aware, constantly be aware of, uh, of the oxygen that is being provided or not provided uh, to the fish. A little side view here of the fish and uh, to include the uh, Z-Rock, who also made it. I'm very glad the Z-Rock made it. Along with the Bucanono and the uh, My Color 500, my little hybrid here. Little hybrid, there he is. Two of them, two little hybrids. I suspect they're probably Red Empresses and Electric Blue combinations from when I was buying uh, unsexed fish. Very often you end up with babies. So, um, so leave you with two bits of advice. If it works, don't mess with it. And always be aware of surface breakup, especially in an overstocked cichlid tank. It only took a few hours, really, because I went to bed pretty late. They looked okay. And when I woke up in the morning, um, that's when I found them. It only takes a few hours for the fish to suffocate and die. So, um, got to be aware of it all right all right so that's all for now and uh, to end off on a bright note uh, be sure that you um, put your entry in to the uh, Ben Ochart 1 million subs <laughs> contest and you can get a, uh, a nice big container of, uh, of KG tropicals food all right so that's it for now thank you so much for watching 
and I appreciate you guys.